Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian coming to you from the TSD Industries Garage. As you can see behind me, I have a 2018 Kawasaki Ninja 400. And in front of me, I have the newly developed TST Industries frame sliders for the Kawasaki Ninja 400. Now these frame sliders have been developed in a no cut fashion. You guys can see we have some mounting points here that are actually gonna mount directly up to the engine mounting geometry. We have some spacers that are gonna help you achieve that. And these are gonna give you the option to actually have a frame slider without having to cut away at your OEM fairings. They're gonna give you a really good contact patch in the event of a low or high side. These Delrin pucks that we have here, very large, are gonna be very resistant to that initial impact. They're gonna take a good bit of that from your motorcycle and all the other places that might make contact at the same time. And they are actually going to give you a nice surface to slide along the ground. We designed these in a way that they should not catch on anything on the ground. Obviously, very many different situations may cause that to happen, but that is a risk you run with any frame sliders. So guys, without any further ado, this installation is very straightforward. We just have to pull the fairings off, pull some frame bolts out, replace them with our supplied hardware, and then ride off. Let's get started. All right, guys, so with our key in hand, we're gonna go ahead and remove the rear seat so that we can take off the actual main rider seat. So unlocking that, just pulling forward, we'll set this off to the side. There is a small loom here. You can see I'm just barely pulling it up. Pull back on that, lift your seat up and out. Has these little locking or accepting tabs that go right underneath the tank brace. All right, so with that done, go ahead and take an M4. Start taking this side panel off. So we're gonna start in the back. Now, do try to keep track of your fasteners. Some are gonna come with a little nylon washer. I'll show you that in a second. If you want to, you can actually go ahead and put them back into the bike once we remove this panel, just to keep track of them. All right, so we took that front screw out. Make sure you keep that nylon washer to protect your bodywork. So at this point, we could actually go ahead and take this back panel, lift up underneath it, you have some little push fasteners that go into their rubber grommets. You wanna get those to kind of pop out, just like so. Then get this tab out of where it's sitting in the fairing. Rotate up and out. There's a small tab here that's gonna go into the front fairing stay type area. And that's gonna be what kind of keeps this in place once you have those two fasteners there. So with this off, we can set it off to the side. Going to continue working with our M4. Gonna remove this screw here. And then one right up here. All right, so at this time, we're actually gonna to have to move down to this lower fairing. So I'm gonna pull up my chair. All right, so with our M5, we can go ahead and break this fastener loose. There we go, you see it has a little shoulder on it. You wanna keep that together as well. We can at this time move forward to the front of this bottom fairing piece. We're gonna have a little push fastener here. I'm gonna take a flat head, just pop that open, leave it in this orientation. You're gonna insert it that way and then press it back down to lock it. Take our M4 again. Remove the fasteners that are here and here. All right, so at this time we could go ahead and take our fairing, lower fairing, pull back and out. Should just, there's little clips that kind of lock into this fairing here. So if you pull out, it'll come right off. All right, still with our M4. We have one fastener down here with a large washer on it. It's at this time that we're actually going to switch to a eight millimeter hex head. There is a fastener there and there that both utilize that head style. We're gonna to wanna to remove both of those. These do both have washers on them, so make sure you keep those together. So with those two fasteners out, go ahead, set them down 
keeping their washers with them. We're gonna take our flat head again. There's a push fastener actually right up here. Push down in the center. Kind of lift up on the edge if you can't get a fingernail underneath it. Pop that out. Just reset it for future use just by pressing it back up into itself. And you'll see it just kind of pops back up out of the top. Set that off to the side. We're gonna have to come up to the front. We have this kind of like front splitter almost here that connects the two side fairings. There's a couple of push fasteners on either side and then four M4 fasteners again. So we're just gonna go ahead and start popping those out. So there's one here, there's one about right there, here. If I can get my tool in the right spot. There we go, one there. So that side should all be good. One, two, three, and four. So we're going to do the same on the other side really quickly. So four of those on either side and switching back to our M4. Go ahead and take these fasteners out. One here, one there, and then two right here actually. go with our fourth fastener out we can actually go ahead and take this front panel out There's some little locking tabs so you're going to want to kind of once you get the the front off so down a little bit you'll see there's these locking tabs here you're going to want to push those back and off so that it can kind of come up and out All right, guys, so with that taken care of, we can actually come back to our main side fairing here. It's just held on by push fasteners right now, so we're gonna go ahead and start at the back, start wiggling those out. There's one right here. There should be another right there. And then the front kinda clips up into this main front fairing. So there we go, taking that out. Going to keep supporting your fairing, taking your flat head. You might not even need it, but we have to disconnect. I'll try to show you guys without putting too much strain. We have to disconnect our signal wire here. So press down on the little lock tab, pull out. I didn't even need the flat head. You might want to use it. Might help a little bit to press down on that tab. So with our side fairing off, we could go ahead and set this off to the side. All right, so with our fairings off, I went ahead and grabbed my right side bracket, the two shorter spacers, and the two shorter supplied M10 fasteners. I also went ahead and grabbed a 14 millimeter hex. That's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna work on this rear engine mount. Go ahead and crack that loose. Or torque down so it might take a little bit of force, but they should come out pretty easily. Might have a little bit of difficulty getting these out. I am gonna go ahead and actually grab a magnetic tool just to help me out there. Pull that frame bolt out. Now guys, it is very, very imperative that you do not do these at the exact same time. I just pulled that one out. I'm going to take my first spacer. Now we've denoted that with a concentric ring on one side of the face. So do look for that. It will be a single ring that's gonna go right here in our rear right side mount. So we're gonna take that, insert our spacer. We're gonna take the shorter of the two M10s, go into the rear mounting position of our bracket, go until we bottom out, start to hand thread this guy in. You do not, do not want to cross thread your engine components. So now that we're getting that to go in by hand, probably start to switch to a tool here. So these are an M8 head M10 fastener. So I went ahead and grabbed an M10 
dial hex key. I'm just gonna start to go a little bit closer to bottom out. We don't wanna tighten this down too, too much yet, but we also do wanna provide the engine with something to hang on on this right side when we do pull out this front engine mount. That is why I talked about not doing these at the exact same time. Once you pull one out, you have to put one back in. Otherwise, you can induce some sag into your engine and you would either have to lift it up or just hope that you do not cross thread once you go in. That's something we wanna avoid entirely. So we're gonna replace a fastener in the engine as soon as we take one out. So with this one in the back, kinda, kinda tightened down, not torqued obviously, but enough to be able to rotate our bracket up into place. We're gonna go ahead and switch back to that 14 millimeter hex head. Take out our front mount. You might feel that has a little bit more resistance on it now. There we go. Again, using my magnetic tool. Oh, looks like I still had a couple of threads left there. There we go. Set that fastener off to the side. You may wanna keep those for later use, but we will not be reusing them in this installation. So we're gonna take the spacer that has the two concentric rings, denoting that it is the second spacer. So one, two, goes in the front of the right side. And we're gonna take the longer of the M10 on this side. We will provide you guys with a diagram so you can see exactly which fastener I'm referencing. But you're gonna to wanna to rotate this up into position. Make sure that you're dead center there. We provided you guys with some adjustment in the back here so you can back off on this fastener just a tiny bit if it's slightly too tight to get you into the right position. There you'll see I have a little bit more adjustability now. I wanna get this to bottom out and start to hand thread that back into our engine. All right, so I'm confident I've grabbed a couple threads there by hand. Switch back to my tool. Start to bring that in a little bit. Tighten up the other one. All right, so with our bracket on, I've gone ahead and grabbed our right side Delrin component. Gonna have to grab our M8 fasteners as well. So we're gonna take both of those for the right side, drop them down into the accepting features on the Delrin component, get them to locate using an M6 Allen key here. Gonna wanna put them up to our bracket, hand thread these guys in again. It's an aluminum component with a steel bolt going into it, so you wanna be careful not to cross thread. There we go, we have that tightened down. It's at this time that we could actually bust out the torque wrenches. I'm gonna go ahead and torque down my actual uh, frame slider, or the Delrin component, and then the frame slider to the actual bike. So I'm gonna take my torque wrench here. This is a shorter range, but we're gonna go up to 144 inch pounds. So that's 12 foot pounds for you guys. Keep that M6 fastener, M6 Allen key rather. There we go. Very audible click on this torque wrench. There we go. All right, so we can now switch actually to our larger torque wrench, set it to 32 foot pounds. I've already done so. We could go ahead and tighten down these M10 fasteners to the OEM spec, which is 32. There we go. One. Two, there we go. At this time, guys, we can actually go ahead and flip over to the other side of the motorcycle. We're gonna do that before we actually go ahead with the reassembly of the fairings on here. So let's flip back over to that. And I'll pick you guys up there. All right, guys, so over here on the left side of this Ninja, it's actually gonna be very, very similar with one consideration. That's that we have our relays there. So I'm just gonna start kind of walking through this, pulling fasteners out, and then stop and talk about the relays when we get there.
All right, guys, so it's at this point that I do want to touch on the fact that we have these brackets on our fairing. They're actually mounted to our fairing, and those do hold our little relay boxes here. So we're going to want to take those off before we go ahead and take these two fasteners that we have left. They should just kind of slide up. You might need to take a little flathead, press down into their little locking feature on that bracket, just kind of click them off. Kind of like that. They'll just kind of float off to the side. Then we can continue. Come up to the front, keeping in mind that we do have our signal plugged in again. So resting the fairing, possibly down a little bit. Again, you don't want to put too much strain on these. All right, sweet. So with our side fairing removed, we can actually go ahead, switch back to that 14 millimeter hex on our socket. We're gonna start again with our rear. Go ahead and break that loose, start pulling it out. All right, so now that that is loose, I'm gonna grab my magnet tool again I'm gonna hold my hand right underneath where that fastener is gonna pull out of. Whoops, dropped the bolt, but caught what I wanted to, which was that 10 millimeter spacer that goes in between your frame and your engine. Retain this, you're gonna to wanna to reuse it. Set that frame bolt off to the side once again. Keep it in your spares box just in case you ever wanna to return to OEM spec. So now with our left side bracket here, we're gonna take the 120 millimeter M10, go into our rear mounting position take the third spacer, which is denoted by three concentric rings on the face. It's gonna be here in our rear left side mount. We're gonna throw that over the bolt. And then as we insert this up into the frame, you're gonna to wanna to take that OEM spacer once again, insert it back up in so that we catch that. There we go. Again, hand threading in to start. Now that I've done that, I could grab a tool. Tighten that down just a little bit, keeping us kind of where we think we're gonna be. All right, switch back again to our 14 millimeter hex. Might need a longer extension. Nope, just barely got it. All right, so once again, now that we're starting to get, still caught a few threads. All right, there we go. So now that we're starting to come out, I'm gonna wanna keep, there we go, until you feel no thread engagement. Taking my little magnetic tool, catching that spacer, dropping the bolt again. Again, just set that off to your side will not be needing that. Keep your spacer. Grab that 130 millimeter M10, the longest of the four spacers. This one actually has no rings on it, denoting that it is the longest of the, all four. So we're gonna wanna insert that into our frame, take our OEM, hold that in its original position, rotate our bracket up into place, navigate our bolt on through. Give myself a little bit more adjustability here. I'm being very careful to hand thread this into our engine. Once we've done that, we could actually go ahead and swap to our tool. All right, guys, so at this time, we're gonna go ahead, grab our left side Delrin component here. Again, TST logo should be towards the rear of the motorcycle, making sure that you have the right one. Left side, correct one. So we're gonna wanna take those M8 fasteners again, just dropping them down in, making sure they locate. 
grab our six millimeter Allen key. Start to thread these guys in. And once again, we're gonna go to 12 foot pounds, 144 inch pounds, if you're using an inch pound reading torque wrench. Nice loud clicks, that's what we like to hear. Grab our larger torque wrench again, set to 32 foot pounds from the other side, torque down the two M10 fasteners, and then guys, the only thing that we have left is to actually reassemble following all of the exact same steps in the reverse order and then these frame sliders will be complete and you'll be ready to roll. There's one. Ooh, and a loosey-goosey too. A little bit further. There we go. All right guys, so I'm not gonna actually bore you with walking you back through all of the re-putting on the fairings. It's very, very straightforward. It's just putting things back where you took them out of. So I'm gonna just go ahead and walk through that. You guys could watch if you like, skip through it to the outro where I talk about these frame sliders a little bit more if you so choose. All right guys, so our very last step before we can call this installation complete is just to replace our seats. So we're gonna slide that main rider seat down in, making sure that those tabs go underneath that tank brace. Locate the little locking area, press down. Make sure you get that lock. And same thing goes for this back seat. All right guys, so with our Ninja reassembled, we can actually call this frame slider installation totally complete. With them on now, I do wanna to touch back on some of the technical features that I had been talking about in the intro of this video. You can see here, they are the no cut style. We utilized this void that Kawasaki left in their fairing to kind of shape our frame slider and give us the right position of where we wanted it. We do have that nice long bracket in there that does have two mounting points, so you're not gonna have any sort of worry about this rotating around on you like you may find with some other kits. With that being said, guys, I do wanna to touch on some of the other products that we do carry for this bike. We obviously have levers, we have a tail light in the works, we have bar ends, we do have spool sliders in the rear. These are all things that you might wanna consider picking up along with the frame sliders to protect your Ninja 400. It's a 2018 model bike, guys. I'm sure you wanna keep it fresh, keep it looking nice. These are some components that are gonna help you do that. If you wanna find them, they'll be on our website at tstindustries.com. Use the drop down menus that we provide to navigate through to the 2018 Ninja 400. You'll find these frame sliders along with many other uh, products that we already have for this bike. Some from our partner companies, some directly from us. Our integrated taillight should be coming out for this bike pretty soon. I don't wanna promise any dates, but it will be there soon. So guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Check out our channel. We have a ton of stuff just like this. More videos pertaining to the Ninja, more videos pertaining to tons of sport bikes. So give us a check out. I'll catch you guys next time.